everybody, and welcome to the all-new Mark Rick Show, presented by Williamson Automotive. I'm Joe Zagacki, alongside my broadcast partner, Don Bailey Jr. Good to see you, DBJ. What? Year number 15 for us. That it is, Joe, and I'm glad to be here. All right, we have the all-new Mark Rick Show in our all-new studio, and this thing is pristine, and of course, we've got the coach. Absolutely. He's going to give us a lot of insight. He's going to tell us things that we need to know. And we might find out a few things that nobody else knows. Now, Mark Richt was a teammate of yours back in the early 80s. He's been a very successful head coach, 15 years at Georgia, and very excited to be the head coach now at his alma mater. Yeah, that he is. He has grabbed this thing by the horns, and he's taken full command. He's setting a wonderful example for not only the university, but for our community as well. How excited should the fans be that Mark Richt has come home? Well, Joe, I think it's evident. Just look at the season ticket sales. An alumni, a former University of Miami quarterback, is back home coaching the Hurricanes, and the fans are coming out in full force. I think one of the great things about Mark Rick being the head coach of the University of Miami, Don, also is he's going to call the plays, and uh, he's a really good play caller. Well, he set numerous records offensively when he was at Florida State University as the coordinator. He put quarterbacks into the National Football League, had Heisman Trophy winners at that position, so he certainly knows what he's doing at that spot, and he's looking forward to it as well. It's going to be fun to have him, of course, on the show, the all-new Mark Rick show, and uh, he's got so much experience. He's a great storyteller as well. That he is, Joe, and the wealth of experience that he brings from the time he was here as a football player under Coach Schnellenberger and then his time away, and then the 15 years at Georgia and the records that he set there with his wins and bowl wins are just gives him a lot of history and perspective. By the way, we're going to be playing in a new stadium, Hard Rock Stadium. That's going to be great. It certainly is, and it's just not new. It's state-of-the-art. It's one of the best in the nation and maybe in the entire world. I'm excited about that, and the fans have got to be pumped up as well about being able to come see their Hurricanes in that arena. All right, we are off and running. The Mark Rick Show. We are in our new studio right here on campus inside the X Center. When we come back, we're going to sit down with the Hurricanes' new head coach, Mark Rick, right here on the Mark Rick Show, so don't go away. Hello everybody and welcome to our show. It's our first show of the year. It's our first show with University of Miami head coach Mark Rick, Joe Zagacki, Don Bailey Jr., and the head coach. Coach, great to have you. Good to be here. Great to have you, and uh, you're back home. Back home. It's uh, It's been fun. I've enjoyed it. I've enjoyed the challenge of starting over again, which, you know, I didn't think I would. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when you become head coach and you know how much it takes to get something rolling the way you want to get it rolling. The thought of starting over, you know, for years was not a good one, but, uh, you know, when things happened the way they did and, and I had this opportunity to come back home to Miami and then got into the process of starting over, uh, it's been really pretty invigorating and been exciting for me. I've, I've enjoyed it quite a bit. What has the first nine months been like for you? Well, just nonstop. You know, uh, the, the slowest month was the first month when I was um, just hired, but the bowl game was still going on. The bowl preparation was still going on. And, and so I kind of took things slow in regard to just trying to observe our players, observe the program, just try to assess what needed to be done in, in all kind of different areas. I, I knew I had to hire a staff, which was important, and I was kind of methodically going through that, knowing that, you just don't get to a second chance at that. You want to get it right the first time. And there were some very, very uh, difficult decisions to be made because there was a lot of great coaches already here. Uh, and, and, and so it was like, who do you keep? Who do you not keep? Um, but in the end, mostly brought in new people that uh, new to Miami that I've had uh, uh, some type of affiliation with, some type of um, relationship with. Because um, you know, I want I want I want a bunch of men that are very very competent in what they do, but I also want them to really believe in the way I like to go about doing things. And I think we found uh, a really great 
group of guys that are working hard together and, and, and there's been certainly some people uh, in different areas of the uh, department that have stayed on that are part of this staff as well that I, and we've, we've, we've meshed together pretty darn good. Coach, one of the things that you, you did first of all was you brought in the mat drills. Everybody was wondering mm -hmm. what's the mat drill, what's the mat drill, and right. I went and saw a couple of those uh, exercise right. sessions, I should right. say, and mm -hmm. you learn a lot about the players there, but it also laid the foundation for the conditioning for the spring football. It was. It, it has to do with getting in shape, but it has a lot more to do with uh, finding out who's physically tough, who's mentally tough, who, who has leadership ability, who's going to quit when things get rough. Uh, it teaches guys to get into a football position, a, a striking position. It teaches guys to get off the ground when you hit the ground. It teaches guys to do things a certain way. Uh, and if you don't, you got to go back and do it again. Or if you have a teammate who's working a drill with you that doesn't do it right, then everybody pays a price for one guy who might make a mistake. So it's a great team building time. It's a great opportunity to uh, judge the athleticism, the conditioning of the team. And, and begin to build, as you said, towards being in the type of condition that you need to start competing in the spring. I thought one of the great things about fall camp was the tempo that you operated at, very fast tempo, especially uh, when you had the 11 on 11s, whether it was the run drill or 11 facing 11. How do you think that tempo is going to help right. the players when you kick it off on Saturday? Well, a lot of people go fast offensively, and, and if you don't practice it, your defense, if the first time they run into that is in a ball game, it, it's, it's tough on them. So even if we weren't going to do it offensively, uh, I think you need to practice it for your defense because they, they need that. But we, are, we do want to uh, go with, and when people talk about tempo offense, you're basically saying the time in between one play to the next is quick. You want to run that play, you want to line up quick, you want to get ready to run the next play and put the pressure on the defense. Uh, the best you can in that way. You don't want to go so fast that you can't execute, uh, but, uh, but we do that. And, and it does give you more plays during practice time. I mean, you might have a, back, back in the day, you'd have a five minute period and you might get seven, eight plays in, you know. If that, now you might get 10 to 12 plays in the same amount of time. So uh, it's, it's much more efficient when you practice. And it does just, it does flat out get those guys in shape. And even at the end of every rack of plays that we have in these 11 on 11 sessions that you mentioned, the last thing we do is we'll, we'll run to the hoop. There's a hoop on the sideline. <laughs> and as soon as that, as soon as that series is over, you got to sprint to the sideline. And when everybody gets there, they'll, they'll break it down and, and get on out of there. But it's, it's a way to condition during practice instead of having to you know, run them after practice. We, we've never, we have not run after practice yet. Uh, we haven't, haven't had a need to. Coach and Brad Kaya is our, or the quarterback in general is <clears throat> key to this tempo as well. You know, and whoever your quarterback is, he, he definitely has to be able to handle it. Um, but you know what, back in the day, you might say, get in the huddle. You, know, you wait till everybody gets in there and you say, uh, R46 on one, on one, ready, break, you know, so, you call that out and then everybody, the receivers go first and then the line lines up and then you get to the line of scrimmage and you start to call your cadence and all that. And it takes time to do all that. But if you run a play when the play's over, you, you just say, right, right, right. Everybody lines up and right and they see the formation. Is I formation, there's a code name and a hand signal for 46. And then you already know what the cadence is on uh, because that's built into the system as well. So now you just go right to that line of scrimmage and within just a couple seconds, you're getting ready to snap the ball again. So you're communicating the same thing. You're just not going in the huddle doing it. And it's some, of, some of it's verbal and some's nonverbal communication. But, um, but if, your quarter, if, it, if things are going too fast for your quarterback, then you're, you're done. All right, we will continue with University of Miami head coach Mark Rick on the Mark Rick Show right after this. Welcome back, everyone, to the Mark Rick Show, presented by Williamson Automotive. Coach Pam Yu comes in on Saturday. How excited are you? Oh, that's good. It's good. <laughs> and, of course, we had our little practice game right. that we have, that, that, that third scrimmage where we try to practice pregame routines and we try to practice 
just transitioning from offense to kicking and kicking to offense or defense or whatever it may be. Uh, and then we, what we try to do is we just, we just set the game up where uh, we were going to play the third and fourth quarter and we we're going to give our opponent a 28 point lead. And so we we're going to get our number one offense and our number one defense and, and key substitution players and then play against the best of the rest. And uh, so we had some really quality players on the Florida A&M scout team, basically. And uh, so, but anyway, I think the offense was starting to track down. Excuse me, you know, Miami was starting to track down Fam, and but uh, somewhere along the way, um, <laughs> we turned the ball over here and there. Before you know it, you know, Florida A&M kicked their tail. <laughs> and uh, last play of the game, they had a pick six, and when they went nuts. Yeah. And, uh, but but it was good to have that type of situation where every drive is crucial. You've got to score every drive. I've done those games before where it's zero to zero and before you know it, it's 21 nothing Miami and then, then the, the scout team lays down and everybody gets bored with it. But if you, if you give them a lead and you gotta find a way to track them down and get used to uh, performing under pressure, it, it's good medicine for you. Coach, the stadium, you got an opportunity to go to Hard Rock earlier right. in the week and what is that? What was your impression of that? I mean, you, you, yeah. you've been to a lot it's of places beautiful. that pack a lot it's of people. It's beautiful. First of all, the um, the field itself, I've never seen grass like that. I mean, <laughs> it, 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 it's pristine. It, it's perfect. And, of course, they didn't want us to put any cleats on it yet. We were just there in our tennis shoes. They allowed us to walk around and all that, which was great. Uh, but then, um, you know, the roof, obviously, the covering, uh, you could tell what a blessing that's going to be for players and, and fans alike. They're saying 90% of the uh, fan base will be covered up in shade at any given time of the day. Uh, if there is sun beating down on somebody, I think it's going to be on our opponent's bench. I think that's how the thing was designed, which is great. Uh, but also the, the four mega jumbotron boards uh, in each you know, corner of the stadium is, is pretty spectacular. It's going to be hard really going to be hard for our players to not want to look at the next play. And that's another reason why you go no huddle. You go real fast. They don't have time to look at the scoreboard and watch replays. But uh, it, it's a beautiful place, and we're really thankful. The other thing is in recruiting, we're allowed to have our uh, recruits uh, up in club live uh, before the game and at halftime, which will be great. And um, it's just, it's Miami, baby. I mean, it's just different than anywhere in the world, and, and no one's going to have what we have, and I'm really thankful. All right, Coach, we're going to kick it off on Saturday, your first game as University of Miami, Miami head coach. I know it's going to be exciting. you got to be looking forward to it. I, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, the cane walk, I'm just uh, excited about getting a chance to see our fans up close. I think it's going to be at 4 p.m., so I'm hoping all the fans come out and, and – uh, has a chance to greet everybody and get the boys fired up for the game. It, people don't understand how much that gets the blood pumping for our players and uh, just looking forward to everybody showing up and, and getting loud and getting crazy and, and having a good time. Thank you so much, Coach, and we will continue on the Mark Rick Show right after this. Welcome back to the Mark Rick Show, presented by Williamson Automotive. Joe Zagacki, alongside Don Bailey Jr. One of the things, Don, that Coach Rick has made a priority is for the Hurricanes to get involved in the community. It's very important to him and this program. Well, Joe, it, it works both ways. He wants the fans to support the University of Miami, and in return, he's going to make sure that his players are committed to helping this community, and he personally is involved in everything they do when they go out into our community. Our special feature on the Hurricanes in the Community is brought to you by U Health Sports Medicine. We'll get you back in the game. The realization that there are people and communities within the communities that we live in that may not have some of the advantages that we have in terms of facilities or, or meals or 
you know, as a Division One athlete nowadays, it's a very charmed life. You know, but the ability for us to somehow impact those communities and those lives, or, or be an example to them, or just you know lend a helping hand, to me, that's what community service is all about. That one's good. This one's good. And this one's good. It's really endearing, you know. Um, they, they have a blast, and it's almost like, you know, we're doing such a big favor for them. But to me, it's a great blessing, you know, putting smiles on their faces. And, you know, and in turn, they put smiles on my face, you know. So it's just a really great thing to do. Are you okay? Like, we care, you know. We're not just, we're not just about football. Um, and I think that's a big thing, you know, with student athletes. We care about other things. We care about the people around us. We feel like we have a lot to give back to this community. I feel like I'm connected a lot to those kids, more than I am to most adults. There's always something funny. All they want is your attention. The kids don't lie to you, man. They tell you how it is. Are you gonna get angry? Hey, fuck yourself out. It's whatever, they're gonna tell you how it is and you figure out your problem. Those kids are just kids, man. They just wanna have fun and just have someone to look up to. And, um, you know, it gives them Maybe it gives them courage, maybe it gives them strength without, you know, you even knowing it, you know? So, uh, a really positive thing. They're humble. Oh my gosh, they're so humble. It's like, my problems aren't really problems. And I mean, that's the main thing I got out of it. It really, it really sits on you heavy that, you know, we, we complain about what? You know, we, we complain about nothing. We have nothing to complain about, yet we still find a way. And you see these little kids and you know whether they're in the uh, community center after school or they're in the hospital sick you know you see these kids who are just full of life who know no evil know no complaints and just you know take life how it was given to them and they run with it and I think we all should learn a lesson from that a great piece on the hurricanes and coach Rick in the community Don Bailey, we've got a football game coming up 6 o'clock Saturday night at Hard Rock Stadium. Miami and FAMU, Florida a and the Rattlers, what are you expecting? I expect a crowd that will be hanging from the rafters. I expect a great halftime from the Marching 100, and I expect a lot of orange and green in the stadium. It's going to be very exciting to see this new offense, pro-style offense, right in your wheelhouse. That it is, and I'm looking forward to running that football a little bit, Mr. Zagaki. I think you're going to like that big fullback, Marquez Williams. I liked him from day one. I think if you, you're going to be excited watching the power that he inflicts when they're running the football, and I think overall the balance that you're going to see on this Miami offense is going to excite every Hurricane fan. Of course, on the other side of the ball, as Coach Rick has mentioned, the Hurricanes are going to be attacking and getting across the line of scrimmage. Well, that's Coach Diaz's M.O. in the first day that he got on campus. He said that you were going to recognize this defense in the future by how many Hurricanes are on the other side of the line of scrimmage. So he's a very aggressive coach. He calls an aggressive game plan defensively, and he's had a ton of success. Bam, you'll be a spread offense, a 4-3 defense, and they are coached by a former Hurricane assistant. Alex Wood was a running backs coach here at the University of Miami and won the national championship twice on Dennis Erickson's staff. But it's going to be the debut of Mark Richt. We could not be more excited. Looking forward to it. We'll see you at the uh, Hard Rock Stadium Saturday night at 6 o'clock. I'm looking forward to it, my friend. All right. For Don Bailey Jr. and head coach Mark Richt, I'm Joe Zagacki. We'll see you next week right here on the Mark Richt Show.